Yeah. Welcome to Easy Learning Class 112 Tutorial Class YouTube. You are welcome. This class treated uh, Mass 112, which is the uh, course title, is uh, Algebra and Trigonometry. Algebra and Trigonometry, which is Mass 112. This Mass 112, we are going to treat uh, the first topic we are going to treat now is the indices topic. Indices. Lesson one. This is our lesson one. And uh, let us look at this. This is a format. This is a format. And this format, this is called uh, power. This is called power. R index. R index. R exponential. We can call it exponential. Exponential. And this is called base. This is called base. So this is the only thing I have to what store in my memory, in my brain, this format. That this man is base, this man is base, and this man is power. As you can see, this man is a variable, and this man is a variable. This man can take any number. He can take minus 2, he can take x, he can take 2y, he can take 1 over 2. That does not concern me. What concerns me is that whatever this man takes to be, I know it as power, or index, or exponential. And whatever this man takes to be, I know it as base of this power. For instance, if I have 2 raised to power 2x, Right now, this man is the base, which is 2. This man has turned to be 2x, which I know it as what? Power of these two. Another example, if I have 3 raised to power minus 2. In this case, this man has turned to what? Base, which is what? 3. Here, this man is minus eh, 2. I can write this again. y raised to power minus 4x squared. That does not concern me. What concern me here is that I know this man as the base, and I know this minus 4x squared as the power. Then, before we can proceed on this particular topic, let us know what is called term. What do we call term? Term. What do we call term? I said what? Term. What do we call term? A term is a Anything that we are writing is a one term. For instance, we say A to Z is a term. An alphabet A to Z is a term. If I write A is a term. If I write X is a term. If I write Y is a term. If I write Y like this is a term. If I write X A, this is a term. If I write X plus Y, this is two term. A term and another term. As soon as I write A X plus 2 plus uh, uh, y x. This is a term. This is another term. So, how many terms do I have here? 2. This and this. If I write now x plus y, this is 2 terms. x is the first term. Second term is what? y. Then, 0 to 9 is also a term. 0 to 9 is also what? A term. What am I saying? 0 to 9 is a what? Term. If I write 0, is a term. If I write 9, is a term. If I write 1, is a term. If I write 2, is a term. If I write 20, is a term. If I write 40, is a term. If I write 26, is a term. If I write 100, is a term. This is one term. This is one term. This is one term. If I write 2 plus 4, this is a term. This is a term. How many term is here? 2. Therefore, we have known. They are numbers as a word term. This man will only be term. Remember, we said a to z is a term, and 0 to 9 is a term. And this 0 to 9 will be only be a term when you stand alone. What am I saying? I said 0 to 9 will be a term when you stand alone. As I write it now, 26 is a term. But immediately is associated with an alphabet. 
is no more a town. He became what coefficients. Look at what I'm talking about. If I write down 3x, this 3 is no more now what is no more called what a town. It's called coefficients. 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 And this coefficient is what takes me how many x did I add. For instance, this means what x plus what x plus what x. This gives me three x. This man is no more what time. It's become a coefficient of x. Just like when I have four y, it simply means y plus what y plus what y plus y, which is four y. Are you get what I'm saying? Then now this man is no more what a time because it's already associated with an alphabet. It's no more a term, it became a coefficient. So what we are trying to get here is that coefficient is what takes me how many terms did I add or I have. Not like when we say we have two bags of rice, three bags of beans. So these two tells us how many bags of rice and beans that we have at home. So it's no more a term. So when I say that from zero to nine is a term when it's time in room. But when it's attached to what an alphabet is no more a time. Right now, you have no way I'm going to say time. You have understood what it means by time. Now, let us see other things we needed to put before we proceed on this uh, topic properly. And I say, anything, any time we write, you have understood what it means by time. Any time we write is raised to power one. If I write x like this, it simply means that this x is raised to power 1. I don't need anybody to tell me it's raised to power 1. And this same x is multiplied by 1. It's multiplied by 1. And this same x is divided by 1. And the answer is what? x. Therefore, if I write x like this, inside my brain, I know that this x is raised to power 1. And I know that this x is multiplied by 1. And I know that this, this x is divided by 1, and the answer is what? x. So when I write any term, any term I write, I know that this surrender that term. For instance, if I write 2, this 2, inside my brain, I know that this 2 is raised to power 1. Also, I know that this 2 is what? Multiplied by 1. And I know that this 2 is also divided by 1, and the answer is 2. Are you can say that? So, whenever I write any term, I know that this surrounds the word the term. If I write this word y, I know that this y is raised to power 1. And I know that this y is what times by 1. And I know that this y is divided by 1. And my answer is what y. Alright, you that is watching this video, you are raised to power 1 multiplied by 1, and that's how I see you as a human being. Any time I can see, if I write this a term now, if I write this term, for me to see it as a term, I know that it's multiplied by 1. And I know that it's raised to power 1. And I know that it's divided by 1. And the answer is that term. If I write this now, A plus B plus 2. How many times do I have here? A term, a term, and another term. This is three terms that I have here. If I have AB is one term, that's multiplication holding them is one term. When I have plus, it becomes C. This is two times. If I have minus three, this is what third time. So this multiplication made a time to be one. Multiplication made time to be one. Understood? You get me right. Multiplication made time to be what one. Then let us proceed. We move to what we call law of indices. We look towards laws. Lots of indices. Lots of indices. Number one, we have what we call multiplication law. Multiplication. What multiplication law? This multiplication law is telling me that a raised to power m times a raised to power what m is equal to a raised to power n plus what m. That's multiplication law. This multiplication law is telling me that a raised to the power n times a raised to the power m is equal to a raised to the power n plus m. This is a format. This is what I needed to put in my brain. I don't need any other thing. This is the format for the multiplication law. And in this format, this man is constant. This plus is constant. This plus is constant. Get me right. 
This cross is constant. Why this N M A is a variable? This N is a power. M is a power. Which can take any value or whatever is going to be. It may be 2, it may be 3, it may be 4. It doesn't concern me. But what I know is that they are all variable, which will take any value. But this plus is a constant which cannot change. Cannot change. Right now, let us move. And there is a condition for me to use this, this formula, this format. This is a formula. Then for me to use it as a condition, what is the condition? This and this are the same base. This base A, this base A. Then this and this are multiplying themselves. So for me to use this, for me to do this, this man must be of the same base and they must multiply themselves. For me to use this, for me to do this, if I have this, for me to do this, this and this must multiply themselves and they must be of the same base. Now let me ask you a question. The question I'm going to ask you now must answer two times yes before I can do this. What's the condition? Are they multiplying themselves? These and these, are they multiplying themselves? The answer is yes. These and these, are they of the same base? The answer is yes. Then the summary, add their power. So for me to do this, this man and this man must be multiplying themselves. And this man and this man must be of the same base. If any of these two conditions is not satisfied, I will not do this. If any of this condition is not satisfied, I will not do this. Assuming that this man have the same base, but they are not multiplying themselves, I will not do this. For instance, I have 2 raised to power y times 2 raised to power x. I will now say is equal to what? 2 raised to power y plus what? x. Y. This base 2. This base 2. Multiplying themselves. So the two conditions are satisfied. They are the same base and they are multiplying themselves. Therefore, I will now say that y plus x, I add their power. And then, another example, if I have now 3x times 3x raised to power minus y, I will say this, the same base and multiplying themselves, I will say x, 3 raised to power x, plus, which is the constant I told you that this plus is constant, and this man is minus what y. What happened? This man has turned to minus y. But it doesn't concern this man. This man is a constant. He appeared. This man now has come out. What is going to appear? Minus y in this case. Then this is the same thing as 3 raised to power x minus y. Somebody will say how? This leads us to what to call plus times minus. This plus times minus. You remember that we say anything we write is multiplied by 1. Therefore, this man is multiplying by 1, which is 1 is here, which is plus 1, times minus y. We give you minus y. And therefore, we say plus times minus. Let us go to this. Plus times minus. The answer is minus. Plus this plus times minus, the answer is what? Minus. For instance, I have 2 times minus 3, the answer is minus 6. Therefore, if I have 2x times minus 3x, the answer is minus 6x squared. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then now, let us proceed. We now say that plus times minus or minus times plus, the answer is what? Minus. For instance, minus 2 times 4 will give me minus 8. That will give me minus 8. Therefore, this become my plus times minus will give me that. And my answer is this. Let us look at another example. I have this example again. That's it. Uh, 3 raised to power minus 2x times... 3 raised to power minus 4x. The answer will be 3 raised to power minus 2x plus, which is a constant in our formula, and that will give me minus 4x in brackets. Then what happened? And I see that this man, 
plus times minus what is going to give me one of it, three raised to the power minus two x minus four x. Then what does this thing mean? It means that I owe him minus two x. I own somebody two x and I own again four x. I mean I'm here owing. I want to know how much am I owing. I'm owing two x and I'm owing another person for four x. What I'm owing in total will be what? Minus 6x. Why is this 6? This is what I owe 2. And I owe again 4. 2 plus 4 will give me what 6. And 6 what? X. And this minus takes me that I'm still owing 6. That takes me that total of what I'm owing is what? 6. This total of what I'm owing. And this is what takes me that I'm owing. If this man become plus, it will become what I have in my pocket. But this is what I'm going to pay out. Then this is my word answer. Another example. If we have that, uh, uh, let's say that we have uh, 2 raised to power, 2 raised to power minus 4y times 2 raised to power 6y. This simply means that I have 2 raised to the power minus 4y plus 6y and that gives me 2 raised to the power minus raised to the power 2y. How did I get that? How did I get 2y? This minus 4y means what I'm going. Plus, who is one of this plus? 6y. Who is one of this minus 4y? 4y is one of this minus and 6y is one of the plus and this plus 6y means what i have minus 4y means what i'm owing so if i'm owing 4y and i paid 6y they will give me balance of 2y and that balance of 2y belongs to me that one is the positive i'm owing 4y I paid 6y. This plus 6y means what I paid. And when I pay that, they give me a balance of what? 2y back. And that's my answer. That's how it is. Then another example. If I have this, uh, let's say 5 raised to the power minus 6. It says 5 raised to the power 6x times 5 raised to the power minus uh, uh, it's x. This will give me 5 raised to the power 6x plus, which is constant in my formula, which is constant in my formula, plus minus what? 8x. And this will give me, you remember, plus times minus will give me 5 raised to the power 6x minus what? 8x. Remember what this plus is? I told you in our formula that this plus is what? Constant. It's always constant in our format. I said it's constant. In respect what this man is going to be, is what? Constant. And in this case, this man has turned to minus 8x. And the plus still exists. Because the plus times minus give me what? Minus, which we have already explained. And this will give me the final answer, meaning that I owe minus 8x. This who is one of these minus? Is 8x. 8x is owner of the minus here. 8x is owner of the minus. Meaning that I'm going 8x. I paid 6x. This is plus 6x. This is minus 8x. Meaning I'm going 8x. I paid 6x. I'm still going now. Are you understand? What I paid is less than what I'm going. I'm going 8x and I paid 6x. I'm going 8x. I paid 6x. I'm still going. And how much am I still owing? It will be what? Minus what? 2x. Are you not saying that? Particularly, that's what I'm talking about. I said, I'm owing minus 8x. Means I'm owing 8x. Plus 6x. Means I have 6x to pay. Then when I pay 6x, I'm still owing minus. Eh? This minus 2 will be that I'm still owing. This minus is what indicate that I'm still owing 2x. Then, this, this multiplication law 
can be extended to three or more times. This multiplication law can be extended to three or more times, more than three times. For instance, if I have a raised to the power n times a raised to the power m times a raised to the power k, it simply means that uh, it simply means that what a raised to the power n plus m plus k. That's what it means. And this is constant. This is constant. This is constant. This man can change. This man can change. This man can change. But these and these are constants as we said in our first, eh? as I said in the first one. So therefore, for instance, if I have an eh, uh, example 2 raised to power minus 4x times 2 raised to power uh, 3x times 2 raised to power minus uh, 4y. I can have this to be 2 raised to the power minus 4x plus plus 3x plus minus 4y. Then I can have this. This can be stated as 2 raised to the power minus 4x plus 3 x plus times minus will give me minus 4y. Then in this case now, we look at this. This and this are like term. What we call like term? This x, this x. This man become their coefficient, this coefficient. Please tell me how many x is here. This become the coefficient as we say. Please tell me how many x is here. This one is y, which is a different term altogether. They are not like. So this man means four rice, four bag of rice, three bag of what? Rice. And this one means that I'm owing four bag of rice. If I call this x to be a rice, this one will be three bag of rice. I'm owing four bag of rice. I pay three bag of rice. I'm sequeling. So this man will give me two minus x, then minus four. Why? How do we get I'm going 4x. I pay 3x. I'm COE, which shows this minus. Say that I'm COE and x. Then, minus 4y. I can add this and this. Why? This is rice. This is beans. They are on like term. We can add on like term. We can subtract on like term. But we can what multiply on like term. We can add on like term. We can what subtract on like term. But we can multiply on like term. So the only thing we can do on a like term is to multiply them. We can add them. We can what subtract them. Therefore, this answer will be lived this way. The only thing I can do here in this answer is to ask what is common here. What is common? Minus one is here. Minus one is here. This is minus, this is minus, they are common. I can simply write this to be what? 2 raised to the power minus. I bring the minus as that means divide 2 by minus. If I divide this 2 by minus, I will have positive x here. If I divide 2 this man by minus, I will have positive 4y here. And this leads us to what we call division by minus. This man is common here. Minus is here, minus is here. If I divide minus x by minus and have plus, what does it mean? Minus divide, minus divide by minus. The answer is what plus. What does it mean? Minus 2 divided by minus 1. The answer is 2. This minus will kill this minus, giving me 1 divided 2 will be 2. So minus divide minus. The answer is what? Plus. The answer will give me positive. I think we are getting the notice of that. Then we have, have now minus 4 divided by minus 2. The minus sign is going to be 2. That was here. I said the minus is common. I divide 2 by minus. It means that I have x minus x divided by minus 1. Then minus 4y divided by minus 1. 
and what I'm going to have is positive here and what positive what for y and that minus is what I bring it out that was it's a printing minus out is common here is here is here I bring it out what I'm going to have here is positive what I'm going to have here is positive when I bring the minus out so I can write this this way I can write this this way then this law can be extended to three or more or four which you have seen and this law can also go on in more than as many as so the major thing we needed what we learned in this law is this format the format what's the format they must be of the same base and they must be multiplying themselves for me to do this they must be of the same base and they must be multiplying themselves for me to do this, they must be of the same base and they must be multiplying themselves. If they are not of the same base and they are multiplying themselves, I will not do that. For instance now, if I have 2 raised to the power x plus 2 raised to the power y, I cannot do this. I can do this. This means not. If I do this, if I say this, plus this and I said is equals to this I have committed what we call mathematical fallacy are you getting what I'm saying now? what I have committed is mathematical fallacy which is a taboo I have committed a taboo the reason is that these are the same base but they are not multiplying themselves so for me to do this they will be multiplying themselves so if I do this I have committed a mathematical word fallacy that means the condition for me to do this they must be multiplying themselves and they must be of the same place. If any otherwise, this will not be done. So note it. Even in three times or four times, they must be multiplying themselves. And when you look at this, these are multiplying this, these are multiplying this. They are, that means they are multiplying themselves. And as they are multiplying themselves, they are of the same place. So I add their power. And remember, in addition of their power, you know that this plus is constant. The only man that changes is this. So whatever he changed to be, this plus will be here. So these things are needed to put this format and this format and this format. All of these are built based on understanding of this format. These are the things I needed to put in my brain. If I pull this, I can generate as many as of the example. So we don't go into cramming example or putting an example or cramming it. But what we need is to know the format which I'm explaining to you. This and this must be of the same base and they must multiply themselves before I can do this. And this and this can be changing. They are variable which can be any value. But this man is constant which must be there before I resolve, which we will see from the example we do. And this is the end of our lesson one. Then, for us to, for you to understand this topic very, very well and be the master of it, you need to follow us in our lesson two, and also in lesson three and lesson four to the next, to the last lesson of this particular topic before you get it right and be a master of it. So, for this lesson one, this is the foundation. The lesson two will give you another one. So. Follow us on this YouTube from lesson 1 to the last lesson of each of the topic we are treating for you to be a master of that topic. Then, love this YouTube, love what you have watched now, share it and comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video.